Hi, I'm Tam with a scope with your solar storm forecast for the week of April 8th. We'll begin this week by talking about region 2027, which has led the solar activity this week with two massive eruptions. The first was an M6.5 flare on April 2nd, and the second was this, this beautiful filament eruption that happened on the 4th. Now that eruption on the, on the 2nd actually spawned an earthward directed solar mass ejection. You'd be surprised because look at that, that thing happened so far on the east limb. But if you look at coronagraph images, you can see there is actually a partial halo that was associated, which meant that this thing was partly Earth directed. Now when preliminary estimates of this solar storm came out, you can see indeed the structure was incredibly massive and the eastern flank of this actually was going to hit Earth. The impact footprint here shows that Earth was going to be surrounded by very dense material, which means this was pretty much a direct hit. So you'd think from those predictions that we were going to have a pretty good solar storm, but when it actually arrived, the field strength was strong and it was really high density, but it came a lot slower than we anticipated and if you see the aurora models, you really didn't think that there was much, but if you turned and looked at DMSP and SUSE data, you can see for Tasmania and New Zealand, there actually was really good aurora. And if you look at, D at POSE data, you can see both the northern and the southern hemispheres had some really good aurora, at least for a short while. Now when I apply space weather layers to Google Earth, do you see these straight lines? These are magnetic field model lines that show where the auroral oval is, both in the north and the south. And you also see these blue boxes. This is overlaid SUSE data, and it shows the high concentrations of auroral arcs. Now you notice the concentration happens mostly in Russia, Sweden, Norway, and Finland. So despite the fact that we had very little southward field, we got to see stunning rainbow aurora from places like Russia and Finnish Lapland. We also got to see coronal displays of aurora. That means what it's coming down on top of you. Beautiful auroral curtains from Sweden. In Scotland, we got some peekaboo through the clouds, and even aurora in Canada. So as we take a look at our stoplight chart, you can see this really was a strange solar storm because it really didn't reach storm level, but it did reach unsettled conditions, not once, but twice, once on April 5th and then again on April 7th. So if you had a little issues with your GPS units on your mobile devices, or if you're a ham radio operator and you had really some problems DXing this uh, past couple days, the solar storm is the reason why. The nice thing though is that the solar storm is now on its way out. Uh, we were settling down and moving back into quiet conditions. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, these are synoptic charts that show all of the active regions all over the sun. The two vertical lines denote the east and west limbs and they bracket the earth field of view. Now, when we set these charts in motion, you can see those white circles, those show new growth regions. And there's a lot of new growth around region 2027. There's also been some decent growth around 2026. And these have been the active players thus far. So they will continue to remain on the earth strike zone uh, during the rest of this week. But you can also see the new growth behind the east limbs We've actually had a couple ejections that are coming from that region, so we can't wait for them to rotate around because they may be major players this week. Now returning to the disk, you can see there are a lot of active regions that are going to be transiting the uh, Earth strike zone this week. Now because they're so clustered, there's a lot of synergy going on. So you're going to still see a lot of uh, flare activity despite the fact that these things are magnetically stable. NOAA is giving us about a 25% chance of M flares over the next three days. So your space weather for this week looks to be pretty quiet. But we do have a lot of potential because there are so many active regions in close proximity that are transiting the Earth strike zone this week. The only thing I can talk about is we have this coronal hole that's going to give, send us some fast wind around the 10th or the 11th, the models say, but that probably won't give us anything more than unsettled conditions, if that, because it's awfully far south, so we're really not going to feel the full force of it. So enjoy the quiet this week, because I'm sure the sun will be sending us something soon. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.